guys, Craig here. Um, recently I did a Homebrew Wednesday video where I did a little experiment on with a hydrometer. And the experiment was supposed to try and demonstrate how little of a difference the temperature of your wort will make um, when you're taking a hydrometer reading. Now, first we should probably get, make sure everybody knows that the temperatures that I'm talking about are just the ones that are close to pitching temperatures. I'm not talking about hot wort or temperatures above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, or anything like that, or pre-boil temperatures. <clears throat> I'm basically talking temperatures that you would have before you pitch your yeast. So anywhere between 55 and 75 degrees or 80 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? And uh, for the longest time, I've believed that you just really shouldn't worry too much about the temperature of the wort. Just take your reading. There's calculations and formulas online that you can use to to adjust for the different temperatures and all that and and you know uh, add or subtract you know from your reading that you get from a hydrometer and I've never believed that it was necessary yeah there's going to be a difference but is it really worth it so I did the experiment with just plain tap water and if you saw the video you know I did it at 60 degrees 70 degrees 80 degrees 90 degrees Fahrenheit and there was very little difference um, but the concern in the comments section, and thank you by, very much, by the way, guys, for bringing this up, because I did think of it, but I didn't think it was that important. The difference is, is that when you're taking a hydrometer reading with your beer, it's not just plain water. It actually has a gravity. It actually has a sugar solution. You got sugar in the water, so the, the hydrometer is going to float more. You know, instead of being down like this with just plain water, it's going to float up like that. Yes, I know this looks very dirty. It's actually really hard working with sugar water because it's sticky and it gets all over everything. So there you go. Here's what I did, and I'll show you the results in just a minute. Um, took my test jar, filled it up with uh, just plain tap water, and then I added some just regular table sugar, and I got it up to a gravity of about 10.64. So 1.064. We call it 10.64 in the brewing world. So, and the concern was is that was that um, the uh, the differences in temperature are going to make more of a difference in the hydrometer reading when you've got a sugar-based solution, just like a wort, and in this case, just sugar water. And so I thought maybe I better redo the experiment because the last thing I want, guys, is to put out false information out there. I don't want people thinking, oh, I can't just, you know, I don't worry about it. I'll just take the Hollinger hydrometer reading. I don't care about the temperature and everything like that. And No, 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 no. If there's a difference, I want you to know about it. So I redid the experiment, and let's take a look at what I did. So I took this water, I put the sugar in, and then I got it down to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, put it in the freezer, used my thermometer, as you, you'll see, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and did my first reading. And then I have a small pot on the stove. I gently heated the water up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, ended up around 72, close enough, okay? took the second reading, and so on, all the way up to 100. So I'm going to walk you through this, these experiments, and we'll see how much of a difference it actually makes. Okay, here's my first reading. I pulled the thermometer out as quickly as I could and showed it. It's going to drift, of course. We'll just call it 62.5 because that's what it was. I spun the hydrometer around to get rid of all the bubbles at the bottom so it didn't affect the reading. And it looks to me, looking at the meniscus, and that's where I'm going to take all of my readings from the same method. So I use the meniscus. You can see the reflection there as it goes around. It's at 1064. 1.064. Each step on there is two gravity points. Next, we have around 72 degrees Fahrenheit, just above. Give her a spin, and let's see what we get. It's like playing roulette. Uh, it looks to me, let's just pause it right there. 1063. Okay, next we're going to be around 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and we'll give her a spin. I already know the answer to this, but we'll wait. <laughs> Should have a spinning wheel sound effect. Uh, this uh, this looks like it's going to be around 1062. Okay, we'll stop it right there, and it's 1062. 
And I, again, I'm doing the same thing every time. I'm taking the reading the same way, looking at that reflection off the light there. You're going to notice the water getting a little bit lower each time because of pouring it back and forth into the from the pot back into the, you know, hydrometer. You lose a little bit of water and spillage and whatnot. So I adjusted the camera eventually. And we'll call that 89 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, see what we've got here. Okay, let's stop it right there. Okay, 1061. Okay, and here I'm going to try and pull this out. I pressed the hold button this time. It says 98 Fahrenheit, so that's what exactly where it was, close to 100. Trying to clean the inside of the uh, test jar, it gets all sticky, and you can see the level has gone down just a bit. I'll try to adjust. I'm not going to stop and edit this. I want to keep it solid so that everyone knows that it wasn't a trick. So um, you can see how cloudy it's hard to read. It looks to me like it's just about 1060. But let's wait. I did clean the side of the jar off. Just hold on. And we'll do another just quick check. We're looking for that little reflection there on the water from the light. And it's hard to see. Wait till it stops moving. I'm pretty sure that that looks like 1061 to me. Okay, so as you can see, it does make more of a difference. Some of you were right. Thank you. Awesome. You know, that's what we do. We learn. We learn all the time. It's great. Um, you were right. It does make more of a difference when you've got a higher gravity solution. But in my opinion, hmm. Listen, how about I don't give you my opinion? How about I just let you decide whether it's worth your while, you know, worrying about doing a, con a temperature or a conversion, uh, hydrometer conversion based on your temperature. Like I said, there's formulas online and, you know, little calculations you can do, but I'm pretty sure, just based on the experiments I did, that um, it would be different with every single gravity, right? Like a higher gravity wart will make have more differences between the different temperatures when you take the readings. Um, whereas a lower gravity wart might have less of a difference between temperatures when you take the readings. So I don't think there's any one particular number or formula that you can really use if you're that concerned about it, then you really have to do what I just did and calibrate your hydrometer. And that's basically what you know this is all about getting your equipment calibrated so you can do exact measurements. Do I, am I going to um, calculate in fit, you know, factor the temperature into the, my hydrometer readings? No, I'm not. I am not going to go through that kind of trouble. Um, but some people might want to, they might want that exact reading, you know, um, and if, especially if they're making up a recipe, they're going to publish it online or they're doing something for a competition. They're going to want pretty exact readings in that case. Sure. But if you're just brewing at home and you're just doing your thing, well, it's completely up to you guys. But I, I don't, I still don't think it's that critical. If your wort is between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just around a great pitching temperature, then all you need to know is what your hydrometer does at in, in that range of temperatures, and it really is a minor uh, difference between the two. So that's the experiment. I hope. I have corrected myself. The last thing I want to do, really, and seriously, is put out false information. And I was in a real hurry to get this video out because I wanted to make sure that people um, got the right information. So this is, I did this to the best of my ability. Um, of course, you can repeat this experiment uh, at home with your own hydrometer if you want, and you may get different results. Um, so it's, it is something that if you're concerned about it, get your hydrometer out and do the experiment uh, you know it's that's all you can really do now some people in the comments on that last video um where i just used water were um uh, you know saying it was a failed experiment or it was you know inaccurate or something like that i don't consider it a, a failed experiment um the experiment was done quite carefully and um i was very careful to make sure that i showed everything and did everything as accurately as possible it's just that i didn't do it with the right solution 
I didn't do it within the parameters of a real-world brewing situation. You don't test the gravity of plain water usually. You always have something in the water and that's why you're testing the gravity. So I hope this video corrects it and I learned a lot from this and I hope you guys did too. And thanks to your help, uh, we were able to clear this up. Listen, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something just like I did. Cheers, 17.